microbrew beers and ales, and online shopping. Learn more about online shopping at foodtown.com slash shopping. WIOX is supported by Margaretville Hospital, a member of the Westchester Medical Center Health Network, a critical access hospital offering comprehensive medical services, including emergency, cardiology, imaging, rehab, and a retail pharmacy. 845-586-1800. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Hat, host of The Tunnel. Tuesday afternoon from 4 to 6 on WIOX Roxbury, serving New York's Catskill region at 91.3 FM, WIOXradio.org, and MTC Cable Channel 20. Okay, you're listening to WIOX Radio, live and local in the Catskill Mountains at 91.3 FM and on MTC Cable TV, Channel 20, everywhere at WIOXradio.org where it's easy to donate if you like what you hear. You can And on any smart device uh, with the TuneIn FM radio apps or other radio. Have you used that yet, John? No. Okay. I have not. All right. So how's it going, John? Things are good. The weather changed, and it's pleasant to be outside working. Yeah, I probably should uh, say that this is From the Forest every Wednesday, 6 to 7 with Ryan and John. Yeah? What have you been up to? Uh, still just going for hikes in the woods whenever I can. Finally, you know, that desire has been building up, and you just don't feel like going for, you know, longer walks in the woods. At least I don't. When it's so hot and muggy and humid. Yeah. And uh, it's been building up for months, and now I'm going out every chance I get yeah, totally. Um, yeah, went camping last weekend. Took the family there. The uh, when you when you're below two thousand feet or so, um, well, I guess Margaretville's below two thousand feet. But on this side, the east, or the east side of the high mount, rather, not the west side. Uh, you run into more Katie dids, and they are they are pretty loud and nice to hear at night. I have to say, man, you yeah. can't even hear anything else. Yeah, it's so loud, huh? Oh yeah. Well, did you see anything neat camping or do anything neat? No, we hung out by the little stream there. And, uh, you know, fire and stuff. Catch a fish? No, it's a pretty small stream. Oh, okay. Yeah, no fish in that one. So, Gotcha. Well, I saw a few more bears this weekend, but one climbed up into an apple tree that I maintain, and I then chased him out because <laughs> yeah. I could just imagine all the broken branches I'd have to deal with and yeah. when I go back to prune it in March. Yeah. 
Yeah, those trees are on the edge of the big woods, so. Yeah, they're they're doomed, but, you know, we do a pretty good job maintaining them over the years. Yeah. We we do it in a way where they don't, there's not a lot of small, dainty branches left for them to break. It's It's pretty much the main scaffold branches, the only thing left of the tree. Oh, yeah. It's kind of how we've been forced to prune them over the years because there's continual breakage. They do a lot of damage. Some people have a lot of damage on their apple trees and more so anymore, it seems. Yeah. But, but. Well, tonight's topic is actually the tent caterpillar pests and lookalikes. So you've probably seen a lot of tent caterpillars out there. I don't know if you're driving around. Um, not all of them are tent caterpillars per se, but we'll get into that. Um, there's some lookalikes, but, um, I was over in Narrowsburg and a lot of the shagbark hickories seemed like they had a lot of the, uh, caterpillar damage. Oh yeah? Yeah. And anywhere around here in Delaware County, you find it some type of tent in a cherry tree this time of year. Yeah. So... But that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And uh, we've been getting a lot of questions about those recently, so I figured might as well do a show on them. Sure. You know? And we're really going to stick to about three. So there's the forest tent cal- caterpillar, the eastern tent caterpillar, and uh, the gypsy moth. So those are known as tent caterpillars. And then there's the fall webworm, which is a lookalike. So we'll that, talk about that one. That's mostly what I think we're seeing right now, right? Yeah, Absolutely. But, um, yeah, damage to trees. All three of these uh, these guys, these caterpillars, they're in the Lepidoptera. Was that the family? I can't remember if it's a family or order. But Lepidoptera, um, caterpillars, like things that become butterflies and moths, okay? All three eat leaves in the spring. So we're pretty much in the fall right now, so spring is past. Eastern tent caterpillars are not normally a pest of forest, but these guys stick to urban areas or where there's, like, uh, ornamental fruit trees. Crab apples, cherry, stuff like that. So mostly urban? Yeah, mostly. Well, you know, because people plant right, um, yeah, ornamental true. fruit trees. So that's why they say urban areas, but any fruit tree pretty much. Rosaceae family, you know, cherry, apple, okay, stuff like that. Have you seen any of those this spring? I don't remember. I think I may have seen a couple, but not too much. I don't think so. I can't remember specifically. Yeah. Uh, tent caterpillars stick mainly to deciduous trees and completely strip them. They can they can completely strip them, um, and sometimes this can last two to three years. And if a tree is healthy, it can take it. You know, defoliation can occur. Remember when we had the forest tent caterpillar damage back in? Well, Delaware County experienced it like two thousand seven, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. It was awful. It was really bad. Ulster County was more uh, two thousand five, two thousand six. In the uh, higher elevations, yeah, it was it was it was so stripped that there was understory plants starting to grow in the forest preserves. So that was, that was pretty unusual. Uh, they would gather on on maple trees and ash trees in huge, huge masses, and enough where I would go out with a shovel and smash them. It's gross. Oh yeah, no doubt. So, but you know, if a tree's weakened. And it's unhealthy, it, you know, two to three years of defoliation will kill it. So, and we have a lot of those. Some people refer to them um, as worm killed areas. Uh, it's like sugar maple, especially on high elevation areas, like on top of ridges and mountains. Those will be hit the worst. Um, really, I think it's because sugar maple, um, it's not very calcium rich on top of our mountains. And the better sites are on the sides for sugar maple. So, uh, yeah, they're already kind of weakened. Yeah, you can, you can see the legacy of that infestation in 2006, 7, 8, even today. Um, yeah. At a distance in the valleys, you can see, you know, the the, the holes in the ridge line at the top of the ridge. Uh, I notice it especially in, like, Stamford area. There's, when you're traveling on Route 10, you look on the on the south side of the road, you can see it on that ridge pretty good. Yeah. Um, but walking on top of the ridges, it's it, right now. It's uh, it's pretty spotty. You still see the snags, which is just the dead standing pole left of the trees that were that were killed, and it might be carpeted with blackberry or fern, depending on what moved in. Yeah. And that's all legacy from that that three year event. Absolutely, there's one area like that in Bovina, Roxborough, a lot of areas like that, especially if they were high graded before. Mm. So what have high graded means like someone will cut it, say in the 1980s and the 90s or whatever. It doesn't matter. Still happens take the best quality trees out 
and now the weakest ones are standing, then the caterpillar comes along, finishes those off, and that's when you get a lot of blackberry grown. Yeah. Which isn't necessarily bad. It's good for wildlife, but, you know, not if you're growing timber. So. Yeah, I did uh, some cutting this summer for this lady. This is just kind of side stuff. It was, she lives in Walton at an elevation that was exactly at the line of where must be the soil somehow changed a little bit. And everything uphill of the house was was dead and dying. And it was came back beech, black birch, uh, and uh, hay-scented fern. And yeah. everything downhill of the house, the sugar maple looks just fine. So uh, I was doing a lot of cutting uphill of the house to yeah. retreat back some of that uh, encroaching black birch that really just wanted to take over her yard after that. Yeah, absolutely. I can think of one area coming over New Kingston Mountain. Some areas like that. I feel like there might be some areas like that you're talking about, you know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they'll usually refoliate in July, trees that are stripped. And yeah, it takes a lot of energy, though. You know, sycamore, that'll happen. Sometimes if we get a really wet spring, there'll be anthracnose or some kind of leaf disease, and uh, sycamore will drop its leaves, but it'll completely refoliate in July. It yeah. does stress the tree out, though. But sycamore, um, they're usually so healthy, you know, they're not going to die from that. I've never seen a sycamore yet die from anth- anthracnose that I've noticed, that I've noticed. Yeah. So, I don't know if you have. I I saw one... I don't know what it died from, but I, I, I looked at one earlier this spring, uh, June or so. I, yeah. I recommended them remove it because it just wasn't looking good. It was leaning towards the house right on the stream bank. Huh. But, you know, I had there was some severe erosion around the tree, too, um, right. from past storm events. So I think it was stressed to begin with. Yeah. Maybe the anthracnose killed it off, but it just recently died. So I yeah. blame the anthracnose of last year for it. Yeah, that tree usually does pretty well. You know, shag bark hickory is usually a has no issues, but um, it's getting some caterpillar damage this year, but nothing harmful. We'll get into that. But if you're just tuning in, you're listening to From the Forest every Wednesday, six to seven p.m. Talk about a different forest-related topic with Ryan and John. Tonight's topic is tent caterpillar pest and lookalikes. And up next, we'll do a comparison chart of the forest tent caterpillar, eastern tent caterpillar, and the good old gypsy moth. She don't like her eggs all runny She thinks crossing her legs is funny She looks down her nose at money She gets it on like the Easter bunny She's my baby, I'm her honey I'm never gonna let her go He ain't got laid in a month of Sundays Caught him once and he was sniffing my undies He ain't too sharp but he gets things done Drinks his beer like it's oxygen But he's my baby And I'm his honey Never gonna let him go In spite of ourselves We'll end up sitting on a rainbow Against all odds Honey, we're the big door prize We're gonna spike Our noses right off of our faces There won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. She thinks all my jokes are corny Convict movies and make her horny She likes ketchup on her scrambled eggs Swears like a sailor when she shaves her legs She takes a lickin' and keeps on ticking. I'm never gonna let her go He's got more balls than a big brass monkey He's whacked out weirdo and a love bug junkie Sly as a fox, crazy as a loon Payday comes and he's a howling at the moon. But he's 
my baby I don't mean maybe I'm never gonna let him go In spite of ourselves We'll end up a sitting on a rainbow Against all odds Honey, we're the big door prize We're gonna spike Our noses right off of our faces There won't be nothing but big old hearts Dancing in our eyes In spite of ourselves We'll end up a sitting on a rainbow Against all odds Honey, we're the big door prize But we're gonna spike our noses right off of our faces. There won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. There won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. In spite of ourselves. All right, it's John Prime. I appreciate a little John Prime. I'm not so sure those two like each other. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know. They don't have a lot of kind words. <laughs> uh, well, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to From the Forest every Wednesday, 6 to 7 p.m. with Ryan and John. Tonight's topic is the tent caterpillar pests and lookalikes. So we're going to compare the forest tent caterpillar, the eastern tent caterpillar, and the gypsy moth right now. So we're going to do. Forest tent caterpillar. It's a native. It's from here. It comes every 10 or so years and obliterates trees. All right, this guy really works hard at uh, defoliation. He's pretty good at it. Darn the uh, guy. Yeah. So the eggs. If you want to know if we're going to have a bad year next year, go out there in the winter and look for the egg masses. And they're, they'll be on the little branches. They're dark. They're compact. And they're, little cyl- they're cylindrical mass with squared ends. Very important, John. Squared ends. Of the egg masses. Yeah, it's very small, like... Size of an eraser. And I'm looking in the canopy of a tree for this. Yeah, so pick a smaller tree. (laughs) (laughs) And we'll get into the trees it likes in a minute. But yeah, exactly. Uh, You're looking for uh, egg masses. The only people who are going to be really interested in this for the most part are going to be maple producers. But yeah, we'll get into that. But uh, so dark, compact, cylindrical masses about the size of an eraser with squared ends. Okay. Okay, it's encircling the branch. And you find this in the winter. Yeah, they're okay. uh, they're hibernating in there. Well, not hibernating, but they're in there. So that makes sense. So at the Maple Conference in January, yeah, somebody gives a report on their prediction of the tent caterpillar next year. Yep, and uh, that must be what they're doing. That's what. No, that's exactly what they're doing. They're shiny, so don't be fooled. The egg masses have to be shiny and square, and and square, John. But if they're dull, then they're old ones. Okay. Okay. All right, so they don't count. Now, if you kill one of those things, you want some something that makes you feel good? You just killed maybe 350 that will defoliate your tree next year in and July. Where can I? They're on the branches I'm looking? Yeah, twigs. You know, twigs. 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 Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, going to try this year. I, yeah. Yeah, take a look, you know. You can get some binos out, but, you know, I'm well, not doing that. Well, I have binos on me a lot. Yeah, I, I'll be up in the tree. But, you know, I guess I could look for them. I could do that, I guess. <laughs> okay, so the larvae. The larvae is a caterpillar. A caterpillar is just a baby insect. It's going to become a moth, right? A brown, dull moth. But So these caterpillars is, what, is what's really doing the impact. Uh, they're, they're really easy to tell, though. Um, they're dark, light blue lines down the sides. But here's the thing. They got keyhole pattern on their back. You see a keyhole pattern on the back? It's a forest tent caterpillar, man. Okay. Keyhole, like an old skeleton key? Yeah. One of those. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. We should probably narrow that down. A lot of keys. Yeah, there's a lot of keys out there. <laughs> uh, or white footprints down the back, right? They're about two inches long. So let's go with that again. Dark with light blue lines down the sides and a line of white footprints down the down the back. All right. It's four tent caterpillar. Painted a picture, but I'm, I'm going to Google that. Yeah, two yeah. inches long. All right, so the behavior. These guys hatch at bud break, you know, when the trees are breaking bud, in the spring. And they hang out with each other. I think that word is called gregarious, right? Is that right? I don't, I don't remember that. 
All right. Well, I th- I'm pretty sure that these guys are gregarious. All right. I don't get to use that too often. I'll agree with you. It's fun to say. Yeah, they they uh, hang out with each other a lot. They're really social. They feed on the buds and young leaves. And they do make slightly silken mats along the trunk and the big main branches, but you probably won't even notice them. So this one is messed up because it doesn't really make a tent. What's up with that? Why people name stuff doesn't make any sense. You know? You can't like these people. I mean, it's close cousin makes a, makes a tent. That's right, but don't jump the gun. So <laughs> forest tent caterpillar doesn't really make a tent. Makes no sense. Yeah, but they have the silky string. You walk into them in the woods. Okay, but it's, it's more like Spider-Man. I mean, they come down, right, on those strands? Yeah. But they don't make a tent, really. Like, it's not anything you would ever notice. Like, wow, that thing's making a tent. That's true. So what the heck? The other caterpillars, which we'll get into, make tents. Well, except for the gypsy moth. But that's whatever. Okay. Yeah. But the gypsy moth's not called tent caterpillar. So... They're renaming, you know, yeah. the taxonomy. They're renaming things all the time. I don't like these people, uh, whoever so they are. You should and, call them yeah. and say, hey, the next time you're going to rename, which will probably be the next five years, because it happens all the time, it seems, to say. It's like mountain ash. It's not even an ash. Not even an ash. It's like red cedar, which isn't a cedar. It's juniper, you know? So yep. it wastes a lot of time. Don't get me started on ironwood. All right, so pupa. That's when they're in a cocoon, right? So now they're in the cocoons, pale yellow silk, and folded leaves or protected areas, right? I'm not even going to talk about the pupa because you probably won't even notice it really. But then there's the adult moth. These things aren't very noticeable either. Not for me. They're just brown, okay? Brown like what you would expect a moth to look like. So the thing is the caterpillars, uh, forest tank caterpillars, they're attracted to white. So that's where you've probably seen them. Like if you have white siding, you're screwed because they're going to be like really gathered on there. And they're brown the color? So no, no, I'm, t- I'm going back to the caterpillars Oh, now. gotcha. I mean, the caterpillars are pretty disgusting in certain areas. They just so gather it up with each other and yeah. defoliating everything. And you hear they're defecating or whatever, the little seeds coming out as they're eating the leaves or, you know, spitting something out. So it's noticeable. It was really bad. But uh, I think we're due for these guys any year now. Yeah, well, the last one was 2006 in a 10-year cycle. 15 years, man. Past due. Yeah. See what happens next year. Yeah, we'll see. So trees. What trees is this thing like? Primarily, and this is why it's so big in the Catskill Mountains, is it loves sugar maple. Yeah. And we have a lot of sugar maple. We have a ton of sugar maple. In fact, we have the best quality sugar maple, I would say, in the world. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, we're in the Catskills. It's true. We have the most in the world. So um, after that, though, It'll dine on aspen, cherry, oaks, birch, ash, alder, elm, basswood, willow. But it will not feed. And this is weird. What is wrong with this little insect? But it won't feed on red maple. What the heck is that about? There's, I don't know, something going on chemically in that leaf. It just can't digest, huh? Or sycamore or conifers. Okay, conifers That makes sense. sense. Total sense. But why not red maple? Yeah, I mean, a sycamore even has a maple-like leaf. Nope. So it likes sugar maple, but not the red maple leaf. Um, doesn't like the sycamore either. So there you go. All right. Have any questions, John, about the uh, forest tent caterpillar? <laughs> I got no questions. I just <laughs> envisioning horror stories. It's the cat. If you're thinking of what the heck are we talking about? It's the caterpillar. Ten years ago, you were walking down the sidewalk and you couldn't walk without squishing about ten of them under your feet. Remember in the uh, um, drainage ditches. Oh, yeah, like clogging up after water flowed down? Disgusting. Ugh. Really bad. Like I said, I would just, I don't know why, but take a shovel and just smash them on a tree, and you'd, you'd get a hundred or more of them. That's when uh, cuckoo birds would show up in the woods. Ah, I missed and that. And they would feed on the caterpillars, yeah. Then they die of a disease. I can't remember the name of the disease. And then we'll get into the government flies. <laughs> Friendly flies. Starting. That's All right, so anyway, the, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to From the Forest every Wednesday, 6 to 7 p.m. Talk about a different forest-related topic. Tonight's topic is tent caterpillar pests and lookalikes. So we just got talking about the uh, forest tent caterpillar. Let's talk about the eastern tent caterpillar. Also oh, native. Also native. Okay. So it just blows your stereotype that natives can't cause impacts. Forest tent is pretty bad in the Catskills. 
So I'll just say that. It can be devastating, especially if you're a maple producer. Now, do you think that's because the food source is just so abundant that it gives them the opportunity to to boost their numbers to high high infestations? Because you don't really hear about it in western New York. I don't, I don't I know uh, people from Western New York. They're like they never talk about this. No, not well. I don't know what those people talk about up there, though. Yeah, you know, I guess I don't know any too many forest-minded people out there, but I don't know. I talked to enough know. people where you don't hear things like worm kill and it's a Catskills thing. I don't really leave the Catskills anymore, so there is that. Oh, okay, well, yeah, it's true. <laughs> you know, I used to, you know, be around Syracuse, but I, I think you know I remember it working its way. I, I seem to remember, I could be wrong, that when I was a ranger in the Catskills 2005 and four, that it was working its way, f- you know, from different areas. They had it in western New York or something, but maybe I'm making that up. I never heard about it in forest, at forestry school at Paul Smith's. You know, I was in the wildlife yeah. program, but still, I would have heard about it Yeah, if it was taught. I don't know. I mean, you know, Paul Smith's, it's like, what do you expect? There's not a lot of sugar milk on Paul Smith's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's spruce and muskrat land. Right. <laughs> All right, so eastern tent caterpillar. All right, it's not it's not much different than the forest tent caterpillar, but there's some key differences. And, and once you hear this, you're never going to forget it. They're easy to identify. But the eggs are extremely similar to forest tent caterpillar. They're small little uh, egg masses, size of an eraser on twigs. Shiny means they're fresh, they're new, and they're going to become devastating caterpillars next year but they have tapered ends and not squared ends so cylindrical right okay exactly and if you kill one you could kill 350 caterpillars july june so there you go larvae they are dark just like the forest tank caterpillar but they have white lines down the back with a light blue and black spots on the sides it's that white line though that sticks out to me and no keyholes. No keyholes. White yep. line. Long one. Eastern tank caterpillar. Two inches long. Behavior. They hatch at bud break in the spring. and But the tents are mostly in fruit trees, but I shouldn't say that yet. But they're in the crotches. This is going to be important later on, John, to dif- differentiate between mm-hmm. another guy that's out there. If it's in the crotch of a tree, it's the eastern tent caterpillar. Okay. Fruit trees. So um, they're not usually as bad, but if you have fruit trees and you care about them, um, they can be. Right. You know, especially because there's everything else attacking fruit trees. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it's it's you, you hear people saying they burnt the tent out of the cat out of the tree. Don't do that. Don't do that. First of all, don't do that. You're going to harm the tree. Yeah. But people do that. And uh, that's what we're talking about. Eastern dead caterpillar. Yeah, so it's in the crotch of the tree, and here's the thing. This is how you know it's an eastern tent caterpillar. It leaves the tent to feed. So if you see this guy, like, leaving its home to go feed, it's probably an eastern tent caterpillar. If it stays in the tent and feeds, something else. We'll talk about that next. What else? Yeah, so um, when it's a pupa, it's a solitary cocoon, white silk with yellow powder. Pretty forgettable for me anyway. Adult moth is reddish-brown. I mean, I can't remember this stuff. They, they look like a brown moth to me, you know? Yeah. Some people can, I'm sure. The trees. Okay, what trees is it like? Cherry, apple, crab apple, fruit trees, ash, birch, maple, oak, poplar, and sometimes, we don't have this around here, pecan, hawthorn, beech, willow. However, it's mostly cherry, apple, crab apple, rosaceae family. Yeah, never seen it in hawthorn. Never seen it in beech. Yeah, me neither. I never noticed it anyway. Right. I mean, beets usually die anyway from beet bark disease. So if you're just tuning in, listen to From the Forest every Wednesday uh, from 6 to 7 p.m. Tonight's topic is tent caterpillar pest and lookalikes. Next, we'll talk about the gypser, good old gypsy moth. An old cowpoke been riding out one dark and windy day. Upon a ridge he rested as he went along his way. When all at once a mighty herd of red-eyed cows he saw a plowing through the ragged skies and up a cloudy draw. The 
ghost head in the sky. Their brands were still on fire and their hooves were made of steel. Their horns were black and shiny and their hot breath he could feel. A bowl of fear went through him as they thundered through the sky. For he saw the riders coming hard. And he heard their mournful cry. Faces gone, their eyes were blurred and shirts all soaked with sweat. They're riding hard to catch that herd, but they ain't caught them yet. Cause they've got to ride forever on that range up in the sky. On horses snorting fire as they ride on, hear their cry. E-B-I-O, E-B-I-O. Done by him, he heard one call his name. If you want to save your soul from hell, a riding on our reins. Then, cowboy, change your ways today, or with us you will ride. A trying to catch the devil's herd across these endless skies. an awesome song yeah i've never heard that version there's only like 10 million versions of this song yeah. holy cow um i can't remember what that guy's name is i feel like it's vaughn something but uh i don't know i feel like i need to play that song when i just drive around <laughs> <laughs> you know? make you feel powerful yeah put your thumb out you know thumbs up all right you know all right so if you're just tuning in you listen to from the forest every wednesday 6 to 7 p.m with Ryan and John, tonight's topic is tent caterpillar pests and lookalikes. So we talked about, we compared the forest tent caterpillar and the eastern tent caterpillar. And up next is the gypsy moth, a non-native. Brought here in 1869. Oh. I think it was brought in for uh, that silken industry, wasn't it, in Massachusetts? Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, the famous picture with a bunch of guys standing on... Scaffolds and branches in Massachusetts trying to pick them out because they made a mistake. Realized that they brought in something that was killing their prized oak trees. Right. Yeah. So these um, these guys are pretty naturalized now. So they're on the same kind of wavelength as the forest tent caterpillar, I would say, in damage. They're, uh, so the eggs are buff-colored or lighter fuzzy patches. So they're nothing like an egg mass that's on a twig. They're these buff-colored, lighter, fuzzy patches on the tree trunk. Okay? Um, you might see them on something else, though. You might see them in firewood, on large branches, in sheltered areas, mm-hmm. lawn furniture. So they can be anywhere. Yeah. Um, there's 600 to 700 eggs in one of those things. So if you can kill one, all right. You did all right. <laughs> um, the larvae, which is the caterpillar. Right, because this is going to become a moth. Five pairs are really easy to identify. Five pairs of raised blue spots, followed by six pairs of red spots, two inches long. So, blue spots, then red spots. Boom. Hairy black, caterpillar, red spots, blue spots, gypsy moth. Done. Okay. Yeah. Did you see any this year? I think I saw one somewhere, but not really. I didn't notice any. Yeah. Okay, behavior. Young larvae eat holes in the leaves, and I think I saw this last year, actually, on top of German Hollow, Pakatak, and Mountain. There was some holes, but I can't remember, and that could have been the larvae, which I wouldn't have known unless I read this. The larvae of the for, of the uh, gypsy moth. Now, when you get a real infestation of adults, or um, rather, older larvae, rather, then they'll just defoliate the whole tree. 
and then you'll be like, okay, there's something going on there. If anybody took a drive out uh, Massachusetts Turnpike in 2017? I did. 18? Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's all you saw was defoliation. Yep. There was not a tree in sight. Yeah. Um, through the Berkshires and all the way across pretty much most of the way to Boston. Yeah. It was bad. It was. You could hear them munching around. Um, I was in Eastern Mass near uh, Gloucester. And, uh, yeah, the ridge tops were especially bad. So uh, when populations are low, they feed at night. What the heck. But when they're high, they feed during the day. So, And I, and I can't even remember this because I was walking at night in Massachusetts, and I could hear them. So I, I, I agree with that because that, that's what that's – I mean I couldn't see them obviously. Well, so why is that? What – I don't know, probably what, what advantage do they have at night? I uh, made birds, you know, bird predators that feed at, during the day, like maybe that cuckoo bird. I don't know. I guess that I'm makes sense. I'm not sure. Yeah. You know? So, uh, you know, I guess there's power in numbers when there's a lot of them. They're like, we need food and we don't care, you know, that predator will eat something else maybe, you know? Yep. The, the other thousands of them. So um, the pupa is a hard brown case pointed at one end in a sheltered place. And the adult moth is a is a they actually do differentiate between females and males. The other ones not really. Uh, the females do not fly and are white with brown markings, and the males are brownish and do fly. So there you go, John. Trees. This thing, gypsy moth, mainly prefers oak. All right, but if it gets hungry, it's gonna eat just about anything, including, unlike the other two, conifers, which I did not know. Wow. Uh, so it also eat apple, sweet gum, which we don't have, speckled alder, which is more north, basswood, gray and white birch, poplar, which could mean, no, well, it's a meaningless term, really. I mean, it could mean a bunch of trees. It could mean <laughs> yellow poplar. It could mean uh, hybrid east, poplar, <laughs> eastern cottonwood, you know, aspen. A lot of people call different trees poplar. Yeah, I got in that discussion with a CFA member today. Yeah. Yep. He was... Uh... Wanted to manage for rough grouse and said he used to do it in Wisconsin, but he doesn't have the the aspen trees here. He's only got poplar. I said, you're mistaken, sir. <laughs> 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 you you have aspen here. I beg to differ, it's sir. It's the same thing. From what you just described, it's the same tree. Well, was he happy? He was still a little, uh, little reserved about cutting them. Skeptical. Skeptical. I told him, why don't we schedule a consultation? I'll come out and we can yeah. talk face-to-face and understand what we're looking at. Yeah, it makes sense someone would be. I mean, it's counterintuitive to cut something and get more of it, right? Right. Yeah. So it'll also feed on black walnut, catalpa, locust, American holly, and shrubs such as mountain laurel. I mean, mountain laurel. Even deer won't eat mountain laurel. Yeah, that's a thick, leathery leaf. Yeah. Rhododendrons, arborvitae. Okay, I can see the arborvitae. I mean, if I, I mean, that's pretty soft. Older ones will eat conifers, hemlock, spruce, pine. And when dense, they will even feed on almost anything. Wow. Yeah. Gypsy. <laughs> Gypsy moth. It's kind of a cool name. Why yeah. do they get the name Gypsy moth? I have no idea. Didn't, I didn't see that one. Darn. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Lookalikes. All right. The lookalikes. Fall webworm, which right. is really why we did this show tonight. That's what you're seeing right now is the fall webworm, yep. which is also in a caterpillar in the Lepidoptera, which I can't remember. It's the family or order. It's embarrassing. Um, it differs by the tents from the eastern tent caterpillar. It always gets confused with that. If you see the tent at the end of the branch, it might be a fall webworm. Also, they feed inside the tent. They're disgusting. For some reason, they gross me out. I mean, it's like they're in there in that tent, and it's like, I don't know. It's gross <laughs> in there, man, because all, all their defecations inside the tent with them. Right, right. They're a weird insect. Okay. You know, at least the eastern tent has the wherewithal to leave its tent and feed. You know what I mean? This thing's doing everything in there. Gotcha. Okay. So that's the, that's the fall webworm. The good thing about the fall webworm is that Feeding this time of year doesn't really damage trees that much because it's the fall. We're, we're entering fall. The trees are already done most of their photosynthesis. The eastern tent caterpillar, uh, that's a springtime thing, and the tree has to refoliate. So that, that stresses them out a little more than the fall. Sure, webworm. it takes a ton of energy. Uh, yeah, so right now you're seeing it mostly in cherry trees. Um, I noticed them first in, like, 
southern Delaware County first. and But now it's pretty much anywhere you go. Anywhere yeah. I go, anyway. I've seen all the cherry trees have it. And if there's big stands of it, then in the morning dew, it looks like the whole mountainside's shimmering um, because the, the dew is shining off the, the webs. Yeah, absolutely. So they are a caterpillar, though. And this is going to be important for what's up next. Oh. Caterpillars... Um, you can treat them all the same if you want to kill them. They're pretty. There's a there's a fabulous product out there that's organic and only kills caterpillars. But just to confuse people, there's a thing called a sawfly. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Which is not in Lepidoptera order. It's in Hymenoptera. A lot of people probably don't realize this. I didn't realize this till uh, you know studying insects a little bit. Their sawflies look just like caterpillars, except for they don't become moths or butterflies. They become, what do they become? Bees, wasps, and ants. Ants? Yeah. Okay. I don't know about the ants, but bees and wasps. Okay? <laughs> so they're in the order Hymenoptera. And basically they look just like a caterpillar, except for they're greasy looking and slug-like. They're disgusting. Slug-like? As in <laughs> yeah. how they move or the, how they... They, they leave a trail. They look, what do you mean? You know, I don't know. They look slug-like, man. Um, the, the larvae. You know, because the way it is. <laughs> yeah, they're short and stubby looking, and they they have legs on every segment of the abdomen. This is a key difference. Every segment of the abdomen has a leg. Unlike caterpillars, there'll be little segments on their abdomen that are legless. This is important. Then, then caterpillars have hair on each one of those legs. And soft flies don't. Okay. Um, soft flies, I have them on my apple trees right now. And they will, especially pear, it seems. They really like pear. There's a few on apple, but the pear trees usually get hammered. And they'll be at the very tips or whatever, feeling like crazy, totally defoliated. Before I knew anything, I was like, oh, I'll put BT on it, which is Bacillus thuringiensis. It's uh, thuricide is its um, commercial name, product name. Or commercial name, and uh, if you spray BT on this thing, that's only meant for Lepidoptera order or caterpillars. It won't kill them. So for soft flies, you got to spray something else like Spinozid, I think, or if you want to go le- less toxic, Spinozid. You know, or um, you could probably I have to look it up, look at the label, but you know, um, soap, insecticidal soap, or maybe Kaolin clay or something like that. So the you- BT, that's a bacteria-based thing going on? I think it's my, microbial, naturally occurring, Bacillus thuringiensis. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happens is it paralyzes the caterpillars, and then they die of starvation. It only kills insects that become butterflies or moths. So the good thing is it doesn't kill your beneficials, like your predators that might kill some other things like aphids or whatever. You, might, you want those predators on your tree or shrub to be around and kill aphids and other pests so if you if you put some kind of contact insecticide that kills everything well now everything's dead mm-hmm. and now you could get an outbreak of a pest so that's why this uh, bt is kind of good in that way because it doesn't kill the beneficials however it does kill butterflies so you know if something like a uh, monarch butterfly which is like pretty much everyone knows because it's beautiful as hell it's going to kill it you know if it comes in contact with it okay but they're usually not on trees that much sometimes no, they're on milkweed, and they're in the fall. So if you're spraying BT, it's probably for a tent caterpillar, and you're going to be spraying that in the spring. Yeah. So. Yeah, and you and, you, and this only works BT when they're about an inch long. So you got to get them when they first come out, the caterpillar or the larvae. Okay. So if you spray BT again on sawfly, it's not going to work. you got to spray something else, and uh, that's important. So right now you might be seeing sawfly damage. And if you have fruit tree, if you have a tree that's um, well established, it's probably not going to harm it. But if it's a fruit tree, like I said, a lot of things attack them. Um, sometimes I just knock them off my hand. I don't need to do anything. You know, put them in some detergent, kill them, make sure they die, or uh, just th- you know squish them or whatever. And usually, right now, I didn't have that many on my trees. I literally went around while mowing the lawn, stopped the mower, knock them off. But some years it's like, okay, if there's enough where I feel like it warrants. And I'll go back, get the backpack sprayer, and give them the hell. So, gotcha. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to From the Forest every Wednesday, 6 to 7 p.m. with Ryan and John. Tonight's topic is tent caterpillar pests and lookalikes. And we've been uh, 
talking about the forest tent caterpillar, the eastern tent caterpillar, the fall webworm, and the uh, sawfly, which is the order Hymenoptera, which becomes a wasp or a bee, unlike the Lepidoptera order, which becomes caterpillars, which become uh, we call moths and butterflies. But up next, we're going to talk about uh, are they harmful to touch caterpillars? And uh, we already went into control, but we could glance over that and uh, go into some herbicides and potential management. <laughs> Stars fall silent from your eyes. All the sights that I have seen. I can't believe that I believed. I wish that you could see. There's a new planet in the solar system.
right. This is From the Forest every Wednesday, 6 to 7 p.m. Talk about a different forest-related topic with Ryan and John. Tonight's topic is tent caterpillar pest and lookalikes. That was R.E.M. A strange band, man. Made some good songs, though. Yeah. I like them. I'm um, a fan. Yeah. So, uh, harmful to humans? Not really. Um, the gypsy moth, apparently, if you touch it, it can give you a rash. There's another uh, tent cat or hairy caterpillar called the, um, oh, man. What is it called? It's white and hairy. I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know the name. I've never heard the name before. Oh, man, I just forgot it. It's um, gone. I know somebody um, that gets a really bad reaction to that thing. They, I've, I've touched it, and I did get a reaction. Not not bad, but it itched. Yeah, no, I, I get it, too. It's a little red, and itchy bumps up. But this guy, he, he breaks out. Tiger? No. Is it? I don't know. Man, I can't remember. Can't be helpful. Well, that one. Tussock moth. Ah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Tussock moth. So, And probably isn't a Lepidoptera. But, yeah, you'll see these white tussock moths. And uh, if you touch them, yeah, some people will get itchy. And I definitely, definitely experienced that. But for the most part, no. Uh, what I found in research is that if you ingest an eastern tent caterpillar, a horse does, it can cause a mare to miscarriage. That's what, that's what research showed. I, I, I mean, How did they geez, find that out? I have no idea, man. But it has not been documented to humans, and I would say, who the hell is eating eastern tent caterpillars? Yeah, most people aren't doing that. So. Jesus Christ. Um, so control. You can either do nothing, So, um, and most of the time, Healthy trees can take defoliation. Um, natural predators will take care of it. Birds, rodents, parasites, diseases, temperature fluctuations. You can man- manually remove egg masses by hand, remember, because we went over what they look like. If they're really bad, like the forest tank caterpillar in the Catskills, you can put sticky tree wraps to catch moving larvae. Because uh, remember, they're gregarious, and they, ha- they hang out with each other, and they'll get stuck in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so you do not leave larvae on the ground. Put them in detergent if you happen to manually pull them off with your hands. Don't burn the tents and the branches because, you know, you'll scald the cambium layer. you will probably kill the branch. Yeah, it's definitely a possibility. So I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Um, herbicide, microbial biological. That's called BT, Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a living organism that must be ingested. It causes paralysis and starvation. To only caterpillars, not sawflies. That's important because they look alike. Uh, you can only be used while the caterpillars are one inch or less, no other stage. Harmless to plants, people, animals, except butterflies, of course. Not good. Right. Or you can use chemical contact poison, and that will impact everyone, right? Anything that it touches will probably kill it. Um, if it's a restricted chemical, then it's, you know, it has to be done by a DEC certified pesticide applicator. Anything commercial has to be done, meaning if you're paying someone, it has to be done by a commercial pesticide applicator, even if it's uh, general use, unrestricted. Right, even if it's a can of wasp spray. Yeah, even if you're paying someone to squirt vinegar, legally you're supposed to have a DEC pesticide applicator. Yep. All right. Management. Um, you want to avoid harvesting timber in heavily defoliated areas. And this is because trees are stressed out. I mean, cutting does stress trees out, even ones next to them and stuff. More light fluctuations. Plant th- plants don't like, you know, huge amounts of differences at one time. Makes sense. Right. So it could change wind and light and water on the, on the forest floor and all that. Yeah. Um, there is a 10-year cycle or so, 10- to 15-year cycle, lasting two to three years with a forest tank caterpillar damage. And spraying, I remember in 2007, there was a company from Lowellville that was airily spraying BT over uh, forest tank caterpillar damage, maple producers' lands. So. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yep. Pretty neat. But in most cases, no one's going to do that. And then there's the friendly fly. Or government fly. <laughs> you know, I've never heard of government fly until you talked about it. Yeah. No? No. So who do you talk to? <laughs> well, when I used to work for D.C., people would come up to us, especially when during those 2004, 2005, when it was really bad in Ulster County. And I'd be on Giant Ledge or Sly Mountain. People would be like, oh, these government flies, you know, D.C. is releasing these. 
the DC is just not that organized or to do something like that. <laughs> as much as I like to give credit for things, I don't, I don't, first of all, it just, I don't, I never saw that, witnessed it, heard of it within the DC. Here's the thing about the government or the friendly fly is that it's, it's native. Um, Sarcophaga ald- aldrichi. I'm not even going to attempt to say that. Uh, it's an important natural enemy of the forest tent caterpillar, and it resembles a house fly. Same thing, you know. See around your house. They're a flesh a flesh uh, fly. But they're bigger. They're more annoying. Yeah. You they're... hear them more. They land on you. They, you feel them. Right. They're in my house a lot. So family of flies known as flesh flies because they feed on the flesh of other insects and animals. And uh, these things end up killing forest tent caterpillars. So when the forest tent caterpillar numbers go up a year or two later, bam, the friendly flies numbers go up. So they attack and kill cocoons of forest tent caterpillars. Friendly flies that you see now will affect the caterpillar populations for the next year. If you had a lot of friendly flies last year, you will probably have few or fewer caterpillars this year. So, and as far as anyone knows, they don't release them. But, um, you know, just, I don't know. I'd get asked that all the time when I worked for the D.C. Rumors are fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun to say government flies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. But that's all the time we have. Wow, flew by. On From the Forest, every Wednesday, 6 to 7 p.m. And tonight's topic was the tent caterpillar pest and lookalikes. And if you're seeing webs out there in trees, it's probably fall webworm. And it's usually not too bad this time of year. And uh, see you next week. See you. The neon lights were flashing and the icy wind did blow. The water seeped into his shoes and the drizzle turned to snow. His eyes were red, his hopes were dead, and the wine was running low. And the old man came home from the forest. His tears fell on the sidewalk as he stumbled. his friend and the old man stumbled in from the forest up a dark and dingy staircase the old man made his way his ragged coat around him as upon his cot he lay and he wondered how it happened that he ended up this way getting lost Town.